Uh, we're overrun with outsiders, uh, people that don't belong in the school are, are using our school as a refuge. Uh, the situation, I think, is serious enough uh, when I state that our principal has told us that when we are, do not have a class in progress that we're to keep our doors locked. I understand some of the teachers have been threatened by asking by calls from on the outside telling them to let certain people outside. Is this true? Yes, this is true. Uh, during our detention hall, which is held after school, we have people come in that want to remove children from the school and uh, before their detention period is ended. Uh, Captain Lusk, I understand you made a presentation to Dr. Estes back in 1968, a letter uh, to this who you are. Is that correct? I wrote Dr. Estes a letter in 1968 outlining some of the problems that we had in our school. Uh, and so far there has been no action taken? I have noticed no action. Uh, Captain, you are familiar with the chain of command procedure. Uh, do you feel like you may have violated the code of ethics by going to city council and uh, prior to coming to the school board? No, I don't, because I believe that the school problem is more than just the school problem. I've tried to work with the experts in the school system, my consultant, the ombudsman. I've talked the situation over with my principal, and uh, I do not feel that I have violated any ethics. That's the Pentagon. That's where they plan wars for America. Whether the wars are to be fought in Vietnam or down the street here in Washington on Capitol Hill. Senator John McClellan continued his hearings on the F-111 today and it continued to look something like a war. He called first to the stand a trio of Air Force officers who work in the Pentagon on one phase or another of the F-111 program. General John W. O'Neill, Vice Commander of the Air Force Systems Command, told the hearing that while charts presented by the senator had shown some deficiencies of the 111 in relatively accurate detail, there were, he said, some noteworthy figures to the credit of the plane which were not shown. He mentioned specifically mission radius, sustained speed, and utilization rate. While Senator McClellan and company were continuing to challenge everything from terminology to the proposed use of the F-111, I talked with Republican Congressman Bob Price of Texas himself a former Air Force pilot who has flown the F-111. Uh, I think this is uh, one of the greatest airplanes that has been perfected because of its terrain following capability, which we have no other aircraft in the sky today with this capability. Uh, the variation of the wings as it reaches altitude gives it a speed uh, that is hardly matched by any other aircraft in the world today. General O'Neill told the Senate hearings that such terms as fighter and bomber have become somewhat obscured with the development of such powerful aircraft as the 111 and with the devastating capabilities of modern bombs and weapons. The general pointed out that in his view and that of the Air Force, the F-111 is a deep interdiction weapon. He said the testimony in previous hearings by high-ranking civilian officials, which indicated that this plane was to be primarily a fighter which could drop bombs if needed, was not as much of a contradiction of today's viewpoint as the senators seemed to think. He said that such terms as fighter and bomber do not have the same connotations as they had even when the F-111 program began seven years ago. Again, Congressman Price. I think it is conceivable, uh, but there are different versions that must be made uh, in order to carry out the mission that uh, is called upon to do. If it is a mission to carry a large bomb load great distances, this aircraft, airplane, the F-111, is capable of doing that. Now, they have built seven different versions of this plane to meet uh, the various uh, responsibilities that the Air Force and uh, other services require. On the subject of why the number of F-111s to be ordered by the Pentagon has declined from 1,700 to 547, 
Senator McClellan tried to pin General O'Neill to the fact that the Air Force was dissatisfied with the airplane. The general would not be pinned. He said instead the primary reason was economic. They just couldn't get enough money to build the airplane. And secondarily, said General O'Neill, they're making too many modifications in the plane and it's causing too many problems. Jerry Taft, Channel 8 News at the Pentagon. They say Dallas is from two to five years behind New York and Paris and fashion styles. We were a bit late getting the miniskirt down here. And now that it's on its way out, experts say, many women say they're not going to wear maxi skirts and media skirts. While the store windows have maxi skirts in them, women are still wearing their hymns well above their knees on downtown Dallas streets. And many say they'll continue to wear minis. This is the case with two girls I talked to at Miss Wade's Fashion Merchandising College in Dallas. Well, I think the mini will be here to stay. I think it's here to stay. The maxi's just a fad, maybe for a while. It's, I don't think it'll stay in very long. You wouldn't buy a maxi skirt? No. How about a midi? Maybe for the evening. No, <laughs> not the midi. <laughs> Why not? It, there's nothing appealing about it. I mean, there's nothing pretty about it. I don't like a midi at all because it, it reminds me of kind of like a grandmother type. Like old, you know, it cuts your legs off, you know, makes your legs look skinny. It's bad. I don't like it. Would so, you buy a maxi skirt? I would buy a maxi, but I wouldn't buy a midi at all. While at least some Dallas women are vowing not to let the hems fall below their knees, women in other parts of the country are actually forming clubs and banding together to help preserve the miniskirt. Still, designers are sure the mid-length midi skirt is the coming thing. The whole lengthening of the silhouette is a trend that started because we're softening the silhouette and we're bringing it closer to the body and your eye gets accustomed to going up and down. Oh, length has been blown out of proportion. That is not the most important thing in the world, but this is something that people can focus on quickly. And it shouldn't. You should wear the length that becomes you. That's, that's the most important thing. So while designers are saying longer skirts are on the way in, and a lot of women are saying they won't go back to longer skirts, pity the poor fashion store buyer who may not know what to buy and may not know what to sell.